session two. Very warm welcome to all of you. Very good afternoon. So I will uh, recap uh, the points we discussed yesterday and then we start with the new points of the day. Uh, the video recording of yesterday's session is already uploaded on Imports Faculty Common YouTube channel. Here you will find all previous sessions videos also. Uh, thank you for registering again for today's session. The same process will have to be followed for tomorrow's uh, concluding session as well. Uh, I will also uh, ask my team to remind uh, again tonight and later tomorrow morning. Uh, you know that will make you. Uh, it will remind you to register in case you have forgotten. So we we'll, let's quickly recap. Uh, the points covered by us yesterday. We uh, discussed uh, the need for establishing the quality culture and drive, and then in transferring the you know the ownership from the organizations to individuals to establish the quality culture is essential. Then we looked at various uh, references uh, that uh, we can find in accreditation manuals and national education policy uh, which gives us a very good inputs in regards to how quality assurance uh, of educational processes could be achieved uh, we looked at the ducker framework reference and uh, the dimensions uh, that are discussed in the ducker framework we tried to find the references alignment of these five dimensions with uh, nac manual other manuals also you please uh, feel free to study and uh, share the findings if you have any interesting findings to share with all of us that would be great and then uh, since the focus of the uh, the modern education is learner uh, outcomes of uh, learning outcomes outcomes of the students learning outcomes are uh, considered to be the uh, the center of uh, whole process of education teaching and learning and uh, that is why uh, the first criteria of NAC accreditation which is curricular aspects uh, focuses on uh, how to develop and why to develop the curriculum uh, by borrowing the concepts of uh, outcomes based education that is clearly mentioned here and uh, it uh, suggests that uh, the universities and autonomous colleges must have uh, a robust process in place to uh, continuously evolve the design of the program. Uh, the references that we find in NAP 2020 are also very important uh, inputs for us when we start thinking about the program designing. That is also one of the points we discussed. We talked about value based education and how, without really involving a separate uh, course how the questions and the curriculum design itself can be oriented towards value-based education and automatically the the objectives of value-based education could be achieved uh, the other external impacts uh, on our thought process of program designing uh, was also discussed by us yesterday we talked about the rapid changes the student mindset explosion of data and uh, the shift in the skill needed the re need for the rigidity in the program designing process these uh, have to change uh, consider when we are talking about uh, program designing for the students who are uh, going who are uh, 21st century students and uh, they have a completely different mindset compared to what we used to have when we were uh, the students we talked about uh, how the innovation age is likely to evolve in near future and uh, what kind of skills are more in demand uh, you know in this innovation age that's also one of the inputs that we have to consider when we are designing the program now and then we started uh, uh, up following a case study approach and then we we were wondering if we were to we, if we were given a responsibility of 
uh, a program designer then how we will approach the overall process so uh, we were then wondering whether there is any ready-made reference for us to uh, take the outcomes to be achieved uh, by our students uh, who would study our program and uh, that was the starting point of our discussion then uh, we we looked at these five points which are essential ingredients of uh, effective program designing uh, uh, so one first point was, is uh, program outcomes to be considered second is uh, curriculum designing uh, which helps uh, get the program outcomes granular designing of the course outcomes high quality of the assessments and analysis of outcomes are uh, in, in my opinion in very important uh, aspects of the program designing uh, we are going to cover all these points in our next uh, two i mean this and then tomorrow's uh, session when we uh, looked at the, what students expects uh, from us uh, when they take admission into the program that is being designed by us uh, they obviously look for value for money they need job and security when they complete the program they they should be socially uh, recognized and uh, that's their expectation and they should be able to get meaningful uh, career path later on so these are all uh, orienting towards outcomes based education i mean uh, since we are talking about uh, the curriculum design uh, program designing by you know borrowing the concepts of uh, outcomes based education which is as per the guidelines given in nep 2020 and also nac uh, we are now going to look at uh, how exactly uh, the program designing could be outcome based uh, oriented so uh, here the terminology was discussed by us program the difference between the program and the course and how the outcomes at the course level are different than the program level outcomes so that was one of the references that we have to carry on with today also uh, so when it comes to choosing uh, the right set of uh, program outcomes we decided to choose uh, some of these uh, attributes to be achieved by the students from uh, well-researched uh, graduate attributes which are there right uh, already uh, kind of accepted uh, globally that these should be the graduate attributes uh, that must be covered some some of the other you know of these uh, three categories must be covered in any graduation program so it's a, a well-defined well-researched and globally accepted list of attributes that could be a starting point for us and obviously all of them could be taken if you are into, you know if you believe that uh, all of these uh, attributes must be achieved by your students so you can take the whole set of uh, graduate attributes but if you uh, don't want to i mean if you don't believe that uh, all all of these attributes are applicable to your program then you are free to pick and choose the right ones uh, here so uh, we had then a discussion about uh, knowledge dimensions and its uh, relevance uh, in the process of uh, program designing uh, and we know that uh, knowledge dimensions are directly applicable to uh, these classifications of uh, program outcomes and that is why uh, understand this dimension of knowledge becomes important in the discussion of program outcomes so uh, so this process requires us to think about what outcomes are the attributes they are synonyms uh, to be chosen by us for our new program that we are designing and then we have to think about what specific to my program uh, what outcomes i must consider here so that's the process that we are uh, going into so once again a small reminder that uh, please re-register for tomorrow's session as well so then um, to discuss this further about what i mean by program specific outcome i uh, wanted to give references from uh, 
NAC manuals. So that you know, these are well-known references. Everybody, uh, this is publicly available document, so everybody can take a look at that. So nicely designed set of uh, program outcomes, by by the way. So uh, these are the ones uh, given by uh, NAC in their manual for uh, zoology on economics uh, program. So uh, these are the standard set. It's just like the way we discussed about choosing some standard attributes from a graduate attribute list exactly the same way even NAC has also done it. There are some standard program outcomes uh, which are called as program outcomes here in this uh, parlance of uh, the terminology of NAC and uh, so you I have also given you know the categories of uh, these program outcomes chosen by NAC there and then they have suggested program specific outcomes right and these are uh, shown here and you can easily find out the categories of uh, these program outcomes program specific outcomes rather given by NAC in the manual for BAC zoology now uh, you would find that for BA economics uh, the the standard the cop the program outcomes which are defined there are common for BA economics also but these four outcomes are different specific to BA economics that's why uh, these are called as specific outcomes so naturally you cannot use the program outcomes of uh, zoology for economics program because those are totally different specific to the uh, the you know economics uh, related uh, outcomes that you want to achieve uh, when your students complete uh, economics uh, graduation and you want uh, the students to achieve certain very specific zoology related outcomes when the students finish their graduation here and that is why these are called as program specific outcomes but they are nothing but program outcomes so when you club all them all of them the 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 one that are standard uh, considered to be standard outcomes and then the one that are considered to be the specific ones when you mix them together they are nothing but the program outcomes so it's something like this so you pick and choose the standard attributes and then you pick and choose the specific attributes related to your uh, you know the domain of your uh, program and then uh, you complete the set of program outcomes to be achieved here so from the student's perspective they are nothing but the program outcome so there is no need of any any confusion uh, to be uh, carried forward about what is po what is pso there is no need of any classification or any different treatment to be given uh, to the uh, pos and the psos because these are all at the uh, these are the attributes these are the outcomes to be achieved by the students when they finish the graduation from the student's perspective they are only the outcomes to be achieved at the program level so there is no need of any uh, uh, you know kind of uh, separate treatment to be given to these outcomes from the academician's perspective uh, so uh, that was about uh, the i i purposely bring in this, this discussion into my sessions although you know because quite a few times i uh, receive uh, questions related what is uh, po what is pso uh, and then that's the reason actually i try to clarify this uh, into my sessions uh, but however i mean i could simply uh, you know avoid that discussion because sometimes i find that uh, uh, further confusion gets created but I think it's better to have that confu get confusion getting created because it triggers the thought process and probably then uh, clarity can be achieved very soon. Uh, but you know, it is important for us to uh, discuss the thought process behind how the outcomes at the program level are achieved because if we are wearing the cap of a program designer, we have to have that clarity about uh, how to come out with the right set of program outcomes uh, which uh, the students uh, have to achieve if they take the admission in the program that I'm going to design. If I have to understand the process of choosing the right program outcomes, then uh, that is the reason I uh, you know, prefer to engage into a discussion which might confuse further to some, but I think uh, it is uh, required there. Uh, so, uh, 
then we discussed about the categories of the program outcomes uh, which uh, and we have been talking about these categorization of knowledge skill and behavior or attitude uh, right from the beginning and uh, we know now the association of uh, these categories with the knowledge dimensions uh, so knowledge uh, category has the association with uh, factual and conceptual knowledge uh, skill category has uh, you know association with uh, procedural and uh, knowledge and attitude has uh, association with metacognitive knowledge uh, you know and then these are the examples of the peels so now this is where uh, we stopped yesterday uh, and we had a very good discussion in the at the end of the session quite a few wonderful questions were asked uh, by the participants yesterday and uh, i believe i could uh, address those questions but if uh, there are any further doubts about uh, the you know the points that we discussed yesterday i would love to address uh, those again today um, so i think so far there are no questions uh, yeah there are uh, certain questions related to certificates uh, i will let me uh, tell you that uh, automatically the certificate gets generated and it is emailed you know uh, after immediately after the session is ended i, I mean it takes one hour uh, so if the session ends at uh, uh, 4 30 uh, you must receive uh, an email within one hour within 60 minutes after that so 5 30 and there will be a link in that uh, email uh, which will download the certificate for you if you let's say um, if you have any some problem of any internet bandwidth that you're in it will throw some error but you can try it later there is no you know 99.99 percent of the times the certificate will get generated automatically I have seen also one another problem yesterday. Uh, if you know these links that are sent to you when you register, uh, let's say with let's say abc at gmail.com is the email ID you registered with, and you you will receive email to abc at gmail.com. So every register registrants uh, login session is uh, associated with this uh, law. You know the ID that you have registered. So if you happen to log in uh to uh, webinar with another um email id and you you will be able to enter the session because you have that uh, string valid string generated for abc at gmail.com but at that time your session at the time of login was a different session in that case your certification will not get generated because system will treat you as uh, absent because originally the, the email ID which was expected to be there in the session, it doesn't seem to be there, right? Uh, so that's the kind of problem I, as I understand, I may be wrong, but uh, that, is that is the reason for uh, the problems related to someone receiving an email from the system that uh, the participant was absent, but the participant believes that he or she was uh, present there. But that is typically the you know, problem of using somebody else's link or you know having a, a different email id at the time of registration and using a different uh, link to register i mean join the session that's typically the problem in my opinion uh, let, let's go ahead so we are going to cover you now top-down approach of uh, program designing this is one of the most interesting discussions uh, uh, of this three day three session webinar um, this clarifies entire doubt about uh, doubts uh, any doubts about the process of course outcome designing also um, so uh, you know the teachers typically are associated with course outcomes so uh, this clarity actually and you know uh, helps them look at the course outcomes designed by them in a different perspective and they many teachers have later communicated me that uh, this process has helped them come out with a very apt and uh, crystal clear course outcome statements i'm pretty sure that you will also uh, be able to use this uh, technique and uh, come out with uh, well-designed uh, course outcome statements for your courses so, however this journey begins at uh, 
the program outcome level which we have already finished this particular discussion and then once uh, the progr program outcomes are designed the next step is curriculum design right remember the five step pro five steps uh, process or five important points which we discussed earlier uh, the second point is curriculum design so once we come up with our comprehensive set of program outcomes the next step is curriculum designing and uh, once we identify the courses uh, which are the logical uh, groupings of the topics uh, in these boxes and uh, then we have to uh, design the course outcome statements uh, once we are done with identifying the courses course outcome statements have to be designed and then we have to think about the assessment tools whether formative or summative which will help us measure the outcomes and then we have to think about what questions we will ask the moment uh, we start talking about the questions then we have to think about cognitive process uh, and the, the shift uh, of our focus is uh, that goes from teaching to learning the moment we start talking about uh, questions to be asked uh, you know in the examinations in the assessments uh, that that shifts our focus from teaching to learning and the moment we start about start talking about learning we have to start thinking about cognitive process and that is the, these are the two dimensions learn uh, knowledge dimensions and cognitive process dimensions these are the two dimensions we have to continuously uh, discuss now here onwards uh, so i'm going to have a blueprint here uh, i'm I'm designing a program which has uh, four, uh, four years, uh, eight semesters. The same technique is applicable obviously for three-year degree program or two-year post-graduation degree program. That's also possible. The philosophy is same here. So uh, this is the blueprint and uh, uh, you can see here the colors are used to identify the uh, program outcomes and their respective classification knowledge skill and at attitude and now we know that knowledge category POs belong to factual and conceptual knowledge skill belongs to procedural knowledge and attitude belongs to metacognitive knowledge so these are the semesters eight semester and i'm assuming that there are five courses per semester there could be more or less also so uh, and then we have to find out now what we should cover in our uh, program designing our curriculum design uh, how do i pick and choose the right uh, set of courses now this is uh, the the course bank uh, which you have chosen uh, based on the feedback received from uh, your industry experts on your panel uh, other stakeholders who are part of the board of studies maybe uh, so many such uh, stakeholders who are supposed to give you uh, inputs about how what content should be covered in a program so you are um, having a pile of uh, course out courses that you have identified as uh, based on the inputs received by other you know many other uh, stakeholders uh, as an individual you may not have the complete knowledge of various courses uh, so you, obviously you will have some domain experts also, uh, subject matter experts also, uh, who are senior educators or maybe the instructional designer or some other uh, subject uh, matter experts who are part of your team. And they, each one of them have given you some inputs. Now you have to figure out what is the appropriate set of courses that will meet my requirement of uh, achieving the program outcomes uh, <clears throat> related to uh, factual and conceptual knowledge category POs. So there are two POs. So I I believe that uh, these eight courses will be will lay a very strong foundation uh, for the students to then start moving from uh, you know the sim basic uh, foundational concepts to uh, complex advanced uh, level. Uh, issues related to the uh, program and uh, be able to apply those 
going forward as they move from one semester to the other semester. So this is the disciplinary knowledge which I am picking and choosing the right content and uh, naturally the color designates that these courses will help the uh, program designer uh, to uh, you know de de design courses uh, which will achieve PO1 and PO2. Now as we go on uh, I am showing you here a little bit now uh, the color of blue, pink color getting introduced here in this case uh, blue color is get, getting introduced here in this uh, content and that indicates obviously that progressively these this content is now going going from uh, basic to advanced levels yeah, from uh, knowledge to uh, skill category so that's the reason um, procedural knowledge will come in picture so a lot of uh, lab practical experimentation will get introduced in my curriculum uh, as I start going, taking the students from, uh, you know, simple to advanced complex uh, world of uh, education. And naturally, the association of this content will change. It will have more associations with the POs in this category. Now, if I then go and choose the courses, which will then start introducing the metacognitive knowledge level requirements, which are defined here by PO7 to PO12, uh, which will be addressed uh, by picking and choosing the right content here to meet the requirement of these POs. So this is called as top-down approach. You first uh, decide what POs you want to achieve, and then you decide what curriculum has to be achieved. Uh, currently, we are in the kind of, you know, in a confused state right now because we are trying to retrofit uh, the old programs into new philosophy and that is why um, it is becoming a like, slightly you know uh, confusing process and uh, that is why uh, because already design curriculum is being taught and then it is being uh, kind of uh, uh, retrofitted uh, in such a way that uh, some kind of you know association with the program outcomes will be uh, artificially is getting established and that is why there is a kind of confusion about how to, what is the philosophy behind mapping of a CO to PO? Uh, is there any rational? This is one of the frequently asked question, how to map COs with the POs? What is the rational behind it? This, this confusion is there because of uh, this fact that in the old programs, program outcomes were never, uh, you know, decided what outcomes of POs I mean, students should achieve. But if you first, this, now that is the reason uh, when the old courses are being mapped with the, the program outcomes, uh, many times you don't find any relevance of any of a program. And you would wonder why this, pro, this course is being taught by me uh, if uh, you know, the students were to achieve these program outcomes. Uh, so uh, that, is a, uh, that is a kind of you know, a dilemma. The confusion will be, uh, will go away if you find if you start using top-down approach of program designing the gaps which i have shown here are shown to emphasize on the fact that we have to also con start considering uh, sufficient time given to the activities which are oriented to develop the uh, attitude in the students uh, we if we are thinking about uh, the 21st century students uh, and especially the students who are right now in the secondary education are likely to enter into higher education in five to ten years from now are likely to have totally different mindset at the same time the innovation age is supposed is uh, kind of uh, assumed to be there and which require which would require uh, skills such as critical thinking communication collaboration innovation and for that, if we are preparing the student to face those challenges, naturally we have to focus more on uh, developing their attitude, which will help them uh, be uh, able to, uh, you know, face those challenges successfully. And that is why today such opportunities are there in our curriculum. However, not all students are able to participate in those activities, such as you know some technical phases are being organized by a, a, a team of students and uh, that builds their leadership skills organizational uh, you know um, activities uh, teach them how to organize events like this how to manage 
how to work in the teams uh, how to connect with the external world you know and uh, uh, so that is those kind of uh, skills get um, uh, will be achieved by the students who participate in those events but what about the other students who do not get that chance or they don't have inclination but uh, we have to build that inclination to you know in, uh, as a compulsory part of our uh, curriculum design and that is why probably when the students who are given exemption to uh, participate in such activities other students are in the classroom and their teaching learning is going on that should not uh, i think that that needs that will have to be avoided in the future to be able to uh, you know help students achieve the the program outcomes related to attitude category now another dimension that is coming in picture is nep 2020 and it requires us to think about what the students will go away go out with if the student choose to uh, discontinue the education after the first year of uh, uh, you know a first two semesters so it is expected that the student should at least be um, uh, certified by us. Uh, certifiable skills are, you know, uh, are uh, achieved by the students, who which could be help, which could be helpful for the student to get some job, uh, which would require those skills, and uh, then come back uh, to continue the education. If a student completes, uh, let's say, some more one uh, another year. We are talking about uh, giving some kind of degree program and uh, those who complete uh, complete uh, four years uh, then they will get the graduation uh, of uh, from the institute that is expected here so a certificate diploma uh, graduation of after three years and graduation after four years is uh, what is something planned and recently what i've uh, observed that many institutions are now converting their three year degree programs to four year degree programs so even the academic uh, programs are undergoing such a change uh, as and you know observed uh, recently and that obviously then that will allow them to uh, give uh, add more uh, you know useful curriculum uh, and uh, be able to then achieve this kind of expectation from uh, the students to uh, that they go away with some kind of meaningful uh, and useful credentials and uh, get some job earn some money come back and continue the education not on they may not come back to the same institute uh, they you know and that's also allowable so that's why the credit bank uh, concept is also uh, is there in the in place now so that's the way the curriculum design top-down approach uh, needs to be in place to design the curriculum and then once you uh, are ready with your first cut of the design you may want to quickly test it so if these are your program outcomes and these are your courses which you have planned then uh, these are the three categories right we know these categories will always remain there then uh, you may find that you know your probably your assumptions were wrong in certain cases because here what it PO5 uh, has association with course 2, course 3, 4, 5, 7. So there are five courses associated with PO1. Whereas uh, PO2 is uh, getting met by course 1 and course 3. PO6 uh, uh, is getting met by course 4 and course 7. So uh, why then so many courses are associated with PO5? Is, is it so important? May or may not be. If it is important, then naturally it should be flagged as one of the most critical POs to be achieved by the students. And uh, this is the kind of input it, uh, that should go to uh, the uh, the teachers who are associated with uh, these co courses. And uh, the attainment levels of PO5 will always be under scanner. The moment you miss some uh, degree, some percentage of the students attaining those outcomes, it will have to be a, a kind of alert to the system because we believe that this is one of the most important PO to be achieved uh, for the students who are completing your graduation program. Obviously, um, you know, uh, if you believe that that's the way it is, but uh, you know, uh, it might give you an idea that the, your assumptions were wrong and then you may want to fine tune your curriculum such a way that uh, the unwanted uh, importance is not given to a particular PO. 
so that is uh, just a uh, you know, check and balance that you have to do once you are done with your program design so uh, here onwards our interesting journey begins and the end product of this journey is course outcome statements so what we have to do let me just check whether there are any questions so far mm, yeah Yeah, so uh, Professor Narendra has asked how many COs should be set for a uh, subject. This is the answer. You will get this answer in next uh, 15 minutes now. Okay, so knowledge dimensions of subtopics of a course. So uh, what is the re what is the re need of uh, thinking about the knowledge dimensions of subtopics of a course? So now we since now, you know, if you recall our um, blueprint that we designed uh, we wanted to first of all think about the POs decide what curriculum should help my students to achieve those uh, program outcomes and then once I decide the program outcomes and the curriculum I must now think about uh, course outcomes so this is the journey towards deciding how to come out with the course outcomes for that we have to think about what knowledge dimensions this course is covering once again just to recall the discussion about what knowledge dimensions are uh, there are four knowledge dimensions right factual conceptual procedural and metacognitive so these are the knowledge dimension associated with our curriculum um, and why curriculum has has been associated with it because program outcomes are associated with this uh, four four knowledge dimensions and program dimensions uh, inherit the properties of the knowledge dimensions and the curriculum inherit the properties of program outcomes so naturally uh, the courses also will inherit the properties of uh, these uh, four knowledge dimensions the content of a course is uh, possesses these uh, characteristics so if if you pick any course of your program uh, you will find that there are some kind of units there um, there are these are units are groupings of some uh, concepts and uh, each uh, this is a mix of the concepts that uh, you would find in a box of a unit so if you uh, try to map knowledge dimensions to these topics and the subtopics in in the in every unit you may come out with uh, 100 different uh, subtopics in the whole course and each topic may be associated with either factual or conceptual or procedural or metacognitive uh, knowledge dimension so that is the first uh, step uh, that you will have to do uh, to uh, that is about identifying the the finer uh, sections of your uh, units which are topics maybe and or subtopics if you believe that that is the granular uh, way of uh, identifying the uh, you know the subtopics of your course and then you start identifying what exactly this subtopic is doing is it a factual knowledge or conceptual knowledge or procedural knowledge accordingly you identify that uh, particular subtopic so this is an example of how to do it uh, this is done by one of the uh, attendees uh, dr shikha in the past and uh, she uh, tried it actually uh, you know whether these concepts are really applicable and uh, she could find that these are all uh, applicable concepts and uh, she came out with these uh, this is citing these are the five uh, unit site which has got uh, various uh, subtopics here and then their respective association with factual conceptual and procedural is identified here uh, you will find this video again uh, in the faculty common youtube channel uh, this is one of the videos there you can take a look at it later on and by the way uh, yeah you can also if you want to contribute uh, to the faculty commons uh, youtube channel please feel free to share with me the videos of uh, the your case studies 
related to outcomes based education implementation um, and uh, if we find it relevant we will obviously post it on our channel there so uh, next step here is that uh, we must uh, start thinking about grouping of uh, these uh, knowledge dimensions so here the why this grouping is required because here in the subtopics they are mixed with uh, these are mixed uh, uh, group of uh, various knowledge dimensions so we are trying to find out whether there is any logical boundary that we can establish and try to club these this factual and this factual or this conceptual and this conceptual can we club that together will it be meaningful uh, grouping of uh, these uh, knowledge uh, dimensions related topics let's try to do that and uh, why that has to be done again is because earlier we have seen that there are a uh, huge number of uh, uh, you know subtopics here so can that be uh, you know condensed um, you know made uh, can we make it manageable that is a question that we are trying to answer here so that you that you may be able to do that uh, easily probably uh, or you may not be able to do that uh, easily but at the end of the day if you could do that it will probably become a manageable uh, you know kind of uh, groupings uh, that you can do uh, so that you know the journey towards uh, uh, course outcome designing becomes uh, much more uh, clearer so here naturally if there are six uh, topics here uh, units or you know here maybe then you may come out with uh, 15 to 20 groups which are created uh, based on the logical groupings of these uh, you know subtopics based on their uh, association with the uh, knowledge dimensions and that is the second step uh, that you have to achieve so this is exactly what is done by dr shikha also here you can see um, that uh, this is the way the grouping is done. So I'm picking this example from the case study that she shared with, with me because this is a, um, a more realistic uh, case the sample or case study that I can share with all of you. But if you if you share with your you know your experiments also, I will start using those as an example in my FDPs later on. Um, so uh, so here now next step is to then. Uh, identify the cognitive process uh, and the assessment so these are the two um, more aspects of uh, our curriculum design which we are going to now achieve what cognitive process i want uh, the students to be assessed at and how am i going to assess them these are the two questions we have to answer so this is a student at the at your left and uh, you know when the teacher is teaching uh, the teaching process covers the uh, factual knowledge, conceptual, procedural, metacognitive. Whereas when the student learns, student is going to learn through these defined uh, steps, uh, remembering, understand, applying, analyzing, evaluating, and creating. There is not, there is absolutely no possibility of any student directly reaching evaluating and creating. It's impossible. One, it's not the way the human beings learn and naturally it is applicable to us as well as to just any other human beings so this is the way the human beings you know absorb the knowledge that is called as cognitive process and uh, this is all this is also famously known as bloom's taxonomy uh, or revised bloom's taxonomy but actually it is a cognitive process so i tend to call it as cognitive process for some one more reason which i am going to tell you in a short while from now uh, so this is teaching process teacher teaches knowledge teachers delivers the knowledge student learns the knowledge but the student goes through these steps so when it comes to uh, assessing the students we, we have to find out uh, at what level of this cognitive process we have to assess them. Uh, so that is the most important decision the curriculum designer has to take. Uh, let's quickly look at what it means, what the cognitive process steps mean. Remember means exhibiting memory of previously learned material by recalling the facts 
terms, basic concepts and answers. The understanding means demonstrating the understanding of the facts and ideas by organizing and comparing. Applying is solving the problems to new situations by applying acquired knowledge, facts and techniques. Analyzing is examining and breaking information into parts by identifying motives or causes. Evaluating means presenting and defending opinions by making judgments about information validity of ideas. And creating means compiling information together in a different way by combining elements to a new pattern or proposing alternative solutions. And those who can provide uh, alternative solutions, obviously they are at the create level, the topmost level of the cognitive process. Uh, so uh, in when in this particular FDP, uh, we we are we are most likely uh, to be at remember and understand level because there is no uh, application that is uh, being planned here. There is no workshop being planned by me. So most of our right now the interaction that is happening is likely to be only at remember and understand level. Unlikely to go to apply and analyze unless you go to back and then apply these uh, concepts to your course the applying is unlikely to happen then if you let's say uh, you and your colleague use these concepts and if you are able to review your colleagues uh, application of this concept and then if you are able to give the suggestion and feedback then uh, you are not only are able to analyze something but you are also able to evaluate something and then if you come out with this something a new model like this uh, which i have come up with uh, right is it is basically considered to be at create level uh, i have created this whole uh, fdp curriculum uh, through my experiences over a period of last 10 years while working with various educators in india and private universities while while implementing outcomes based education technology um, that made me uh, read, go through several research documents or man manuals of accreditation processes uh, and think uh, while du during the discussions with uh, the stakeholders in these uh, private universities, I understood many other things, uh, different perspective, the actual practical views, not just theoretical views. And uh, that went into our uh, technology designing and that has that helped us understand more about it and I could come out with some models like this. So that is at the create level. So that is a progression that happens over a period of time. And uh, that is why uh, uh, this is considered to be, this is called as cognitive process of uh, human beings. Inst interestingly, um, our Indian, uh, ancient Indian scholars actually also had uh, talked about uh, cognitive process you can read this here i will read the one that is in english uh, willing to listen to actually listen to understand what is listen uh, what to understand what we listen to be able to remember what we have listened to be able to deduce some conclusions and put forth arguments to be able to formalize and conclusively put forth the thought knowledge of the around and philosophy these are the eight facets of buddhi so our ancient indian philosophers say that there are eight facets of buddhi the modern uh, psychologists believe that there are six steps of cognitive process since uh, that is what is no, now accepted uh, reality in education uh, domain i'm going to stick to that However, there are different, uh, there are bit, you know, uh, there are other such dimensions also which are being considered. And if you believe that eight dimensions are useful for your curriculum design, uh, the curriculum design could be done based on that. The, and then based on that, the uh, assessment of the students can also can be done. In the field of medical education, MBBS program, they use something called as Miller's uh, scale. Miller scale is of four steps uh, the, it begins with knows knows how shows how and does does is surgery surgical procedure um, this may be on mannequins so dummy uh, 
some kind of you know uh, equipment uh, resembling uh, the organs of the hum human body and then the student sh is showing that how to do it but uh, does means like maybe you know actually the student is able to perform some kind of surgery that is the highest level and uh, obviously knowing and knowing how is a theoretical aspect but showing and doing is obviously uh, actually the practical uh, implementation of it so that is the scale used in uh, medical education uh, it's a four dimension scale however um, bloom's taxonomy or or cognitive process or the indian philosophers uh, cognitive process or the miller scale uh, they all have one thing in common that is the remembering something and uh, that is called as knowledge retention um, unless and until somebody is able to retain the knowledge it's not possible to apply that um, and uh, you will find that those who are slow learners um, they have the problem of knowledge retention i may i may be slightly wrong but i'm pretty sure that i'm not completely wrong so uh, that is their, their main problem actually knowledge retention because all other steps involved in cognitive process are a transfer of that knowledge such as understand apply analyze right uh, evaluate and uh, finally create so uh, research and theory in cognitive science have shown that human cognition can be analyzed into cognitive processes which are six categories and uh, these are basically uh, which we have discussed uh, in last uh, five minutes to now go one one step deeper into this uh, discussion uh, let me first of all check whether there are any questions uh, okay there is one question here by professor uh, rakiba what is meant by mapping of employability outcomes and how it is done uh, employability outcome may be at the program level right so uh, employability outcomes are multiple outcomes so what are the skills required in the industry for, uh, where the your students are likely to go for a job if uh, if i think about uh, computer science then the answer is very easy the student is likely to go to work in it companies and then based on what skills they have communicated you uh, that uh, are missing in the students uh, when they join uh, them might have been communicated to you by uh, these companies when they go come to you for your campus drives or some other um, you know conferences in which uh, you they would communicate this to the educators that we are finding these skills lacking in the students so can you do something about it and those are the employability uh, uh, related uh, uh, outcomes that uh, will have to be uh, first of all identified let's say this critical thinking is one of the uh, problem that you are you know is missing uh, and then how to develop the critical thinking is it going to be uh, developed in a classroom by teaching them what is critical thinking maybe starting point yes but uh, more and more assignments uh, of any other course will have to be focused on how to develop the critical thinking uh, it is it is it can't be uh, a, a, you know two credit course to teach what is critical thinking it will just create the awareness but uh, if uh, unless and until students are able to apply that uh, in all other uh, courses that they are likely to learn as a part of this uh, graduation program uh, it is uh, the skills will never be achieved by them and once again there will be a gap in the achieving these program level outcomes so that is what is required here in when you start thinking about program designing it's top down so first of all you as you rightly said uh, how to achieve employability related outcomes but first of all you have to identify what those outcomes are related to uh, employability then you think about what curriculum design should be there uh, to prepare the students for that kind of employability outcome that is the way i am going to look at it it's it can't be 
just by uh, addressing by one course related to employability it's never like going to be like that it has to be uh, part and parcel of each and every course many activities could be designed uh, to which are focused uh, to build that kind of critical thinking abilities or communication skills um, and then only this automatically uh, the these course outcomes uh, will start achieving uh, those uh, program level outcomes that's the way to look at it um, okay oh, right so that was the only question uh, so far i'm going ahead so here uh, as far as the time is concerned it has been 55 minutes now uh, into our session we, another 30 minutes are remaining so logically i will obviously cover uh, the part of this session such a way that you we conclude this session with some complete information about one particular major topic of the day and then we obviously will cover the remaining ones to in tomorrow's session um, so um, coming back to the cognitive process cognitive process begins with uh, remembering something that is retention of the knowledge and then uh, rest of those dimensions are about transfer so uh, this is very nicely created uh, table here not by me uh, i have taken a reference from some research paper uh, this is the category of the cognitive process remember there are these are the processes within that uh, category and uh, they are uh, and these uh, bold letters words are called as action verbs and that uh, it describes what is recognizing it is comparing the knowledge from long-term memory with presented information uh, and uh, recalling is retrieving the knowledge from long-term memory when presented with a question so recognizing and recalling uh, are the two uh, cognitive processes which are part of the remember so this is all research done by uh, education psycho education is psychologists and they came out with some uh, directives here and then uh, if you are targeting let's say recalling uh, you want the students to recall something then you you are expected to ask questions which are dependent on the extent of providing the hints and being placed within the larger context so you will frame the question such a way that half part of the question will hint them something and then you will ask your question complete and that that hint will be used by them to answer the question so that will help them recall something that they learned in the past and they are producing it on the as their answer so that is the way the the questions have to be designed in this case true or false or multiple choice questions matching the items from two sets are good enough to be able to recognize that okay this is uh, so remembering is the category recognizing is the process and you would try when you ask the question such as true false what you are doing is you are um, just checking is evaluating whether the students are able to recognize something that is the difference between the way the questions have to be answered here based on the cognitive process in terms of understanding now this is transfer of the knowledge so uh, understanding has a huge set of uh, cognitive processes here interpreting exemplifying classifying summarizing inferring comparing explaining let's go for uh, comparing detecting correspondence between two or more entities uh, and then uh, the the verbs are compare contrast match map correlate so when you draft a question uh, to if you want to see whether the students are able to compare something then you have to ask the questions which will uh, which will be uh, which will the way which will assess the student if they are able to show correspondence between the respective parts of two entities 
and you may then choose these action verbs to draft uh, frame your questions so that's the way the the process has to be recognized that you want to check whether the students are able to understand the concept that you have taught then you have to then next step is to see what cognitive process exactly you want to use here to assess the students to be at understand level and then accordingly you'll have to frame the question so this is the process of uh, framing the questions uh, you know according to the cognitive process uh, so likewise you know there are examples of apply analyze evaluate and create here right so the main idea here is that when the teacher is teaching the knowledge uh, there we as a program designer have to ensure that the questions which are being asked by the teacher are being asked to make sure that the certain level of cognitive process is assessed by the teacher so if the teacher is supposed to teach factual knowledge and uh, then the, as a program designer if we want the teacher to assess the student at understand level then the questions to be framed are supposed to be at understand level and that is the idea here if if the teacher is teaching conceptual knowledge then the teacher has and if i if we want the students to be assessed at apply level then the questions have to be framed uh, such a way that they will assess the student at apply level now uh, I'll, I'll tell you what exactly happens when mismatching of uh, these two uh, dimensions happen so uh, you know if you uh, wanted uh, as a program designer wanted the teachers to ask the questions uh, related to up, assess the students at apply level but in reality if they are only being assessed at understand level then obviously uh, the purpose of outcomes based education is completely lost here so uh, because there is a mismatch here and that's in one of the important problems uh, that uh, uh, the program designers have to fix when they come out with the new curriculum here onwards so now with this uh, background of uh, what exactly uh, is the philosophy thought process uh, behind drafting framing the questions assessing the students the learning of the learning process of the student uh, then it will help us now take one more step towards course outcome designing so coming back to our model here here we identified the subtopics uh, the knowledge dimensions of our subtopics we group these subtopics to uh, make it manageable there is no this is not a compulsory step but if you want to do that you bring down the 100 variations to let's say 15 to 20 variations you can group the subtopics such a way that they belong to same category of the same dimension of the knowledge like this and then you are free to label it such a way that uh, it becomes a human readable you know group uh, label uh, right and for example introduction to database this could be a label that you know that this group belongs to the factual uh, knowledge related uh, uh, subtopics and they all belong to introduction to databases that's the kind of you know label you can create and this labeling is very important step in course outcomes designing now as we have discussed uh, we have to we have to identify the desired level of cognition uh, so this desired level of cognition in this particular case um, i want uh, students to be at understand level this, these decisions by the way are taken by the program designer the curriculum designer um, what we are talking about is just one course there are 30 to 40 different courses in a program naturally for each and every course we have to be taken through this process because we have to come out with the set of course outcome for each course in this uh, by using uh, this uh, method so uh, coming back here uh, we are we have we have decided that i want understand uh, level uh, to be assessed by the student of the students likewise i want this factual uh, 
uh, group uh, to be assessed at apply level this conceptual group also i want to be assessed at apply level but the second conceptual group i want to be assessed at analysis level next procedural analysis and next procedural at evaluate level so i'm just giving the example um, based on the uh, overall uh, thought process of uh, the program designing which anybody can master um, you know progressively um, that will give this idea of you know how to decide this uh, desired cognitive uh, level uh, for every uh, subtopic and the corresponding uh, knowledge dimension that uh, fine tuning of this uh, thought process can happen only after we start applying these ideas in reality and assess whether or not that is the right assumption that will give this feedback will give us uh, you know more uh, ideas about how to do it uh, correctly but i can share with you some of the mm, you know model level ideas about how to rationalize uh, this uh, process of identifying desired level of cognition so when now we are we are we are here right we have uh, identified uh, units and then knowledge dimensions we have identified uh, groups and then every group we associated with one desired level of cognition so i whenever i want to assess whether the students have learned these uh, topics subtopics i will assess them at understand level so naturally uh, my next uh, question is now i know that this is the understand level cognitive uh, category but what is the sub process what, what is the uh, action verb that i must choose right so that is the next uh, question i must have interpret or classify or uh, calculate or uh, implement what that uh, action verb should be that is the decision we have to take now and uh, to be able to arrive at this decision we have to think about the overall program level roadmap so coming back to our earlier discussion that there are these three uh, domains right cognitive psychomotor and affective domain and uh, each uh, uh, and these are nothing but the categories of uh, the program outcomes also right knowledge skill and attitude which is written here knowledge skill and attitude these are the program outcomes categories so based on these program outcomes we have decided and defined or des designed the curriculum so uh, all in the the courses which are falling into the category of knowledge uh, related POs, i might want i might uh, take the students from simple to complex uh, uh, you know uh, concepts uh, and then when I, I evaluate their uh, cognitive uh, level i might progressively take them from simpler to complex uh, expectations so i want them to be able to just de describe define but later on i want them to uh, you know assess and critic also uh, in my uh, whenever i teach them the uh, disciplinary knowledge i just don't want them to uh, able to identify and explain i want them to be uh, able to compose and combine something so this is the expectation that i might uh, ex raise over a period of time right uh, likewise psychomotor also i might uh, ex i might expect them to plan something design something but later on i want them to be able to perform that effortlessly and consistently with assurance uh, progressively uh, in the case of uh, attitude related uh, content which i am going to teach them i initially probably i might uh, uh, expect them to show some interest volunteer to some activities but later on i want them to be able to show principled and consistent behavior so that is the progression that i can think about whenever i i go back to my uh, blueprint i think about those uh, program outcomes divided into knowledge skill and uh, attitude category when i think about the curriculum related to these pos and now i'm thinking about how am i assess going to assess the students then i am thinking about what cognitive levels they must achieve and only then based on that i am going to think about 
how am i going to assess them the first step uh, is identifying the cognitive process at which the student should be expected to be at and then you ask the questions best to see whether they are there or not if there is a mismatch in the, between these obviously the assessments are not effective obviously the outcomes based education is not implemented correctly and that is why what happens is that uh, it is nobody understands why exactly these things are happening and people lose the interest because there is no logic behind anything because you don't you are unable to find any logic behind anything and that is why although outcomes based education is a very powerful uh, technique of improving the students learning outcomes it loses its uh, uh, base just because it, there are incorrectly designed uh, outcomes there and there is no thought process behind how to measure these course level outcomes what should be expected from the students what cognitive process we want them to be at if there is no uh, alignment of uh, uh, the uh, program and the curriculum design uh, to uh, the cognitive process the knowledge dimension cognitive process and the uh, assessments then naturally uh you will not be able to achieve the outcome space education implementation successfully and people will lose interest because they don't find any meaning it's just a tick mark based on some compliance and uh, based for some accreditation process yeah these are the things there this is a basically uh item to show and uh, comply and tick mark if uh, if you want to go beyond that then the thought process is really deep here which requ which requires to be in place to implement outcomes based education uh, in in its real sense uh, so uh, what coming back to this uh, what we wanted to do was uh, rationally we want to decide what should be the action verb we must choose so one of the ideas that i shared with you that you think about simple to more complex word and take them through raise your expectations uh, according to the roadmap decided by the because you don't want to penalize the student unnecessarily you don't want to make their life complicated unnecessarily you what your goal is basically to see whether the outcomes are being achieved consistently at the course level and then automatically then the program level outcomes will be achieved if you are able to achieve the course level outcomes so that is the idea here and uh, so based on this idea uh, if you go back to our earlier discussion right uh, if i am uh, bringing this under understand level uh, the chart here um, and then i if i would go back to the model that we are designing the first unit belongs to factual and then we want the students to be at understand level and then here factual and understand junction point shows me that uh, there are a few uh, you know action verbs here explain infer so which one i would like to use that is the decision i have to take based on the overall roadmap that i can come out with so that's the idea here so if this is a knowledge dimension and cognitive process dimension the junction point of this will show you what action verbs you must use and based on that you can choose uh, one or multiple action verbs uh, for your assessment uh, because these are knowledge dimension blocks and the knowledge dimension blocks have multiple uh, topics there subtopics and you may want to associate uh, you want to assess uh, one subtopic with one action verb another with another action verb so it is it is quite quite possible that you may come up with multiple action verbs for your junction points for these uh, uh, you know uh, desired level of cognitions that you have identified so which i have made you know showed here as well that this particular conceptual apply has two um, action verbs because you believe that multiple action verbs will suffice your need here so you come up with uh, your action verbs here like this and now uh, this will help us uh, in defining the course outcomes so actually course outcome is a, uh, is a byproduct of uh, this process it automatically emerges actually we don't have to do anything extra um, in uh, 
doing uh, you know uh, to de define the course outcome it automatically happens let me show you this magic now uh, before that i will address uh, some of the questions here uh, so thank you professor uh, jani to appreciate these efforts uh, um, these are the kind of words uh, motivate us to do a good job consistently Uh, so yes, Dr. Jani, there is a, there are uh, these rec sessions are recorded and uh, you will get those on Imports Faculty Commons uh, YouTube channel. Uh, Professor Kriti uh, Kriti is asking uh, for a com for computer engineering course, what subject should be added to the curriculum to justify pure 12 of lifelong learning? Uh, so actually, uh, I answered this question yesterday. Uh, lifelong learning is related. It's basically is metacognitive related uh, knowledge strategic knowledge or self uh, learning uh, kind of uh, metacognitive uh, knowledge dimension is uh, associated with lifelong learning PO so uh, who would learn lifelong uh, only those who would know what they don't know and uh, how to create this uh, attitude in the students of self-checking self-evaluation that is possible through simple orientation of the questions being asked in any uh, course you take let's say since you are computer engineering faculty uh, let's say operating system is the course uh, the the questions that you are asking in operating system can be oriented such a way that it will make the student think about what they don't know and this seeking just like the way uh, the in old days when the hard disk used to be uh, the you know uh, the in, in data on the hard disk used to be uh, you know kind of uh, found out by the pointer the seeker uh, the students will you know start seeking uh, their memory their brain to know first of all what they don't know i already know this i already know this but teacher is asking me to find out what you don't know about something and then that is the mental mentally immediately their their mind will go into evaluation phase analysis phase uh, and that will give them that will that will help them answer your question that i don't know these three things i know these 10 things but i don't know these three things and that is creating it is about creating this attitude of um, self assessment and that this is a attitude that is going to make them lifelong learner so you don't need any course for that simple orientation of the questions is going to make them lifelong learners that's the uh, contention i have uh, so how to assess the social skills another question here uh, so it's a good question i must address this uh, more elaborately in my fdp programs uh, later on um, so here uh, social skills are essentially you are probably referring to how one how a student interacts with uh, somebody outside of your educational organization maybe right uh, or maybe within the your uh, walls of your campus a student of one faculty goes to and interacts with uh, students of other faculty or the other teachers in other faculty maybe that is a limited scope of uh, being social maybe right uh, so how would you develop these skills you will have to design uh, assessment such a way that these assessments will create the opportunities for your students to uh, go and interact with those other people which you believe um, uh, you know will have will have to be interacted with by your students and you have this plan of building the some social skills in them uh, so this is all activity driven many uh, such uh, skills cannot be just uh, developed by uh, delivering the discipline knowledge you know that right uh, so that is the reason i in my blueprint of the program designing i showed purposely some gaps in the um, in you know in the curriculum and this is to free up the time uh, for accommodating more and more such uh, activities 
uh, for so that you know all the students in your classroom are able to participate in those activities so we probably are kind of you know stuffing the four year or three year or two year program such and such a such a you know with too tightly and that is not giving us enough time to accommodate uh, activities which are related to developing uh, social skills uh, and if uh, which are related to some of the uh, program outcomes such as uh, uh, communication skills or uh, you know uh, leadership skills so these require definitely social skills the emotional intelligence uh, has to be better uh, if uh, you are developing students uh, to be able to lead themselves or lead others leading themselves also one of the requirements in many times uh, so thank you uh, professor raj for that uh, discussion uh, question another uh, question is by dr hari uh, can we consider elective subjects for calculation of popf attainment the answer is uh, can be given by yourself uh, as a program designer if you believe that the elective is decided by you uh, to be part of your curriculum uh, because you want to achieve certain program outcome so if you believe that uh, elective is not going to be um, able to uh, the, the elective is not going to help the students to be able to achieve any program outcomes then the simple answer is that that program that course should be discarded there is no purpose of that course because it is not supposed to give any uh, outcomes to the students which are at the program outcome level it's a top down anything that is going to be covered in the boundaries of the curriculum design has to have relationship with program outcomes anything that is not having any relation association with the program outcomes should be removed from the program design curriculum design so electives why why electives are being uh, uh, why electives come in picture because we believe that um, students should be able to pick and choose the courses uh, for, you know based on their choices uh, right now uh, uh, you know uh, we decide that okay these are the elective courses uh, we, from which they can pick and choose the right ones for them uh, based on what the students are picking and choosing this is there any rational given to them uh, or it is just uh, their liking uh, many times actually students get confused what uh, electives they should choose uh, because everything is uh, you know good for them and they are they have no inclination to about anything uh, so they will wonder which one is good for me uh, and unless and until you show them the path okay if you choose this uh, elective this is the po that it is going to help you meet if this is the elective that you want to choose then this is the po which you will you will you will become better communicator if you choose this elective you will be able to um, you know be able to use some modern tools so a skill related po is uh, going to be achieved so are you uh, are you a student who is good at psychomotor skills or are you a student who is good in emotional intelligence so uh, you always like to lead people you know uh, take the natural leadership of something so you should better learn these courses so that should be the input given to the students and they will automatically choose the right electives um, and naturally if you are deciding as a program designer that these are the electives i want the students to choose they have to be there unless and you know uh, because they are going to meet some program outcomes otherwise you just remove those there is no purpose of such courses and naturally the answer to your question is that you must measure it if you find the relevance of these courses Uh, dr pratima thank you very much for your kind words uh, professor jyoti is asking uh, for social skills we can also involve the students in social activities which makes them more active in us absolutely thank you very much for this input uh, professor you actually worded my thoughts uh, more you know uh, 
in a better manner um, so, so these are the kind of activities we have to accommodate in our curriculum as much as possible and every student should be able to participate in that not uh, currently, we exam the students uh, to go and participate in this activity and other students keep studying. That should not be the case, in my opinion. So uh, now we are very close to the course outcome designing. And as I said, if you come out, we, if you design this uh, uh, model like this, course outcomes is a, just a byproduct. It happens naturally, automatically. Let me show you how. So course outcomes, uh, as you know, are the what students should achieve at the end of every course. Uh, they inherit the properties of attitude, skill and knowledge because the course inherits the property of the uh, program outcomes. The program outcomes inherit the property of the classifications related to knowledge dimensions. And that is why course outcomes also have to uh, inherit those properties the most important aspect of the co that it should be measurable because you measure the co's and that helps you see whether the po's are being attained so uh, what we have to do is for the purpose of designing the co's we have to remove this uh, desired level of cognitions because the purpose is over what we require is action verb and this uh, label here, um, grouping of the uh, uh, subtopics is done by us with respect to their knowledge dimensions, right? So we require this, this, data, this information here and we require action verbs. We don't want this now, uh, the purpose is over. So let's take it out and then move the action verbs towards your right, left and move the knowledge blocks towards your right and this will give us the course outcome one two and likewise uh, the other course outcomes so somebody has asked how many course outcomes uh, should be designed for a course the answer is here it all depends on how nicely you come out with your um, you know these uh, knowledge dimensions identification how do you group them together if you come out with 15 groups, you will have 50, minimum 15 course outcome statements. It is as simple as that. If you have, let's say, uh, but uh, to be precise, if a particular knowledge block has more action verb, we have seen examples like that earlier, right? So naturally, every action verb has to have one course outcome. So if your total action verbs that you have identified are 25 then there has to be 25 course outcome statements and that is the kind of granularity will help you measure those outcomes very accurately today uh, i don't know uh, how this misconception has occurred people say that there are thumb rule is that there are five to seven course outcome statements should be there and those are designed uh, such a way that you really can't uh, know, know, know how to measure this course outcomes. What am I going to do after measuring these course outcomes? Because they don't really clearly tell you what gaps the students have, what remedial actions you have to take so that the students will sh start showing better performance in the similar category of the course outcomes in the next exam. And that is why uh, the granularity of the course outcome statement is extremely important here and this is the rationale behind that you have to identify the subtopics you have to identify what each subtopic is here uh, doing here what knowledge dimension is uh, being covered by this subtopic identify what cognitive level you want the students to be at identify the action verb and that automatically gives you the number of course outcome statements so this number is entirely dependent on you there is no thumb rule so i'll give you a couple of examples or of good designs of course outcome statements uh, these are also found in that manual thanks to the somebody who has written that manual really nice good job there um, so you can easily find out if i would uh, show you this statement now 
I am 100% sure that you will be able to identify what is the action verb here and what is the knowledge uh, dimension, uh, you know, here. So, describe is the action verb and this is uh, general taxonomic rule is what? Is the knowledge statement there, right? Here it is conceptual knowledge, you know, general taxonomic rules conceptual knowledge on animal classification that is a condition on animal classification so uh, the course outcome statement has to have four components two of these components are optional but they make the statement really powerful the first is action which we know right action verb second is knowledge so this is the label that you will give to the group of uh, subtopics which you are covering in a um, knowledge uh, block and uh, the third is condition which i have seen the example of a condition and the fourth is criteria so uh, for example condition and criteria make the statement very powerful i'll show you the example also but uh, let's think about a um, assessment uh, given to the student for example if you want the student to conduct a lab experiment using uh, cryogenic uh, level temperature for example that's the condition and once they come out with their observations uh, these observations should be compared with some kind of you know standard uh, uh, benchmark and then if this their observations are matching with the benchmark or not matching with the benchmark higher or lower whatever way you want them to explain why they could meet why they could not meet both the explanation should be given them whenever you according to their observations and that is the criteria if they are able to give you the right justification then you will believe that the students have achieved the course outcome so uh, however the course outcome statement at least should have knowledge and uh, action and knowledge which is the process that we have uh, draw, you know uh, created uh, earlier and then you can further uh, kind of you know uh, expand the statements that come automatically as a part of our earlier uh, process this is another example and this is the third example which covers all the components of uh, course outcome action knowledge condition and criteria so this is the way course outcome should be designed this is this video which i am showing you also is there on in parts faculty commons this is uh, the experiment or rather the uh, this is a case study of how these concepts that we have just discussed are applicable practically uh, which is shown by this teacher uh, dr shikha um, you know by applying these techniques for her course and uh, this video is there on in parts faculty commons please feel free to uh, take a look at that later on and these are the course outcome statements uh, that are designed using this technique so now we have reached the uh, last part of our uh, program designing uh, technique but uh, now we have actually crossed our uh, today's session time uh, so we i want to conclude here for you know and then tomorrow we will start from here any questions uh, so i don't think there are any question left um, so uh, we'll continue tomorrow uh, you know this discussion i hope that it was uh, useful for you uh, there is one question by professor adil here how to transfer focus from only content delivery to purpose delivery uh, this is the probably you know you know what answer i am going to give because you know that's what i believe that outcomes based education the perspective um, of outcomes based education needs to be changed first of all currently it is very transactional based it is just tick mark and compliance based uh, uh, you know uh, outlook uh, and that needs to be changed actually if uh, program designing uh, process is done uh, by using the real outcomes based education uh, techniques 
then uh, definitely the content delivery will change it will have some purpose and that purpose is helping the students achieve the outcomes why because students have dreams and those dreams have to be we have to very trade softly we make sure that they don't fall and that's the reason uh, we have to help the students achieve their dreams and that is our responsibility as educators we know that i don't have to basically bring that up since we are into this profession that we have accepted that this is uh, our responsibility because this is our profession now and that is why we have to always think about uh, the dreams the students have and uh, with by keeping that in mind we have to design the programs we have to do the right things rightly and then the this uh, content delivery will definitely change its orientation to purpose delivery thank you for asking that question professor adil so with that uh, i will uh, conclude this session thank you so much for all those appreciations and uh, that uh, definitely motivates me to continue doing good work i uh, thank you very much bye bye take care the, again this video will be available on the youtube channel and uh, please register tomorrow once again for the third session Good night.